This is the Shell Eco Marathon Drivers World Championships. But what's it all about? Well, each team has to build their own urban concept vehicle. These vehicles have to pass over 100 technical and safety tests. Now, each team has had to battle it out from Singapore to Detroit to London, all for this afternoon's grand final. But what does that entail? Well, there are nine teams. Each team gets a practice lap. They then get a qualifying lap to determine grid order. For the grand final, there are four laps. And the first car to cross that line takes the checkered flag. But there's a catch, because we ain't gonna make this easy. There's a limited amount of fuel, so if you go hard too soon, you get left on the track. What is everyone battling for? Well, there is one grand prize. An all expenses paid trip to Ferrari HQ to learn from the experts. Everybody wants this. Are you ready? Let's go. A quick selfie, and Done. we're live! It, and we are live. Do you get that? That's a good picture, dude. That's, do you know what? I'm looking good in that picture. Like, oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Welcome to our coverage of the 2017 Shelly Marathon Drivers World Championship here from the Queen Elizabeth Park in London. The weather, Jason, is just about still up. with us. But it's a little dodge. If you look at the skies here, yeah, you can feel it in yeah, the air. It's getting a little close. And we've got a fantastic capacity crowd here. Give us the whoop, 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 people. Make some noise, guys. All right. Here we go. This Looking is it. Good. Look, this good. is it. This is Especially it. Especially you, sir, with a beard. That's a, that's a strong beard. Fine beard work there. Um, Jace, Jason, you are uh, a general sort of technology guide, yep. all round good egg. Yep. And, and that means you're, uh, I suppose, a tech geek. I am a sports broadcaster and sports geek. You certainly this are. Combines the two. It does. So, how good is this event from what you've seen it? Well, so I mean, far? obviously, the, the Make Your Future event, okay, has, has been amazing. I've been here for the last four days. I've seen incredible technologies from, you know, coffee grounds that would be on landfill but now been made into briquettes that you can cook food with, uh, to, you know, a gravity light that uses nothing but rocks in a bag to power a light. I mean, some incredible tech people um, great stuff for, for kids to get involved with but as you know and it's why we stood on the tarmac here which was purposely laid by the way for this event it's all about this all right the drivers championship this is the denouement the big bang uh, for the weekend and i'm super excited so Ayo has just given us a nice little introduction to what this is all about but let's just tell you about where we are right now Aya mentioned uh, that we have nine cars. Actually, we have eight. We've lost one in practice because they didn't manage to pass the brake test. And that's how stringent the rules are. They're pretty difficult. You've got to make sure you get through every single one of them. We've got all three energy classes represented. We have got internal combustion. We have got battery electric. And they are, uh, by the way, on pole. And hydrogen fuel cell. Oh, I'm, I'm, You're I'm getting so excited. excited. Oh, hello. Oh, they're there. The hydrogen gang are with us. I'm really excited because... La jolie vie for the technology. Here they are. It, it took... That was very impressive. Uh, it took this event for me to understand how far hydrogen technology has gone. I had no idea, for example, that 10 miles from my house, it turns out, Shell have got a working hydrogen fuel pump, which blew my mind. And now one of the top three on the grid, if I'm not mistaken, is a hydrogen fuel cell car. Am I right? You're right. They were pole for most of the time but got pipped just at the end of qualifying you're aware of this guys by st thomas academy experimental vehicle team and they're in a battery electric car they're down there there they are over there and then we also have as we mentioned the internal combustion engine at night three from the usa they're also in third place and they're over there as well my goodness we've got everyone on this track I just wanted to point out, my microphone's malfunctioning, so I'll use yours, David. Um, you've probably got a sense of the, the tribalism that we've got here, okay? There's a fantastic feeling here. The crowd are really galvanised around their particular teams. Uh, nine teams, but hundreds and hundreds of people that have stayed around for the last few, uh, few days, been involved in the action in various categories, but really are now focused on this single race. They are, and we've done a little bit of a world tour, actually, with this, Jason. We've been to Singapore in March, and that's where we had the Asia qualifiers. And we had uh, three teams there that made it through. Then we went to Detroit in May. Three more teams made it through. Now we're here in London. The European qualifiers are done. And of course, after this, we head to Maranello because that is the big price. That's what they're all racing for on this very bit of bitumen, shell recyclable bitumen, by the way, today. 
And of course, we had Bumi Silawanga, who were from Indonesia. They won the title last year. They went to Maranello. They had a unique, once in a lifetime, money cannot buy experience. Let's just show you what happened when we went to Ferrari HQ. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, in just a few moments' time, the cars are going to be lining up behind me. Teams from Indonesia, teams from France, teams from America. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic final. I was here last year on the track, and there was drama, let me tell you. There was so much going on. If last year is anything to go by, I'm hoping this year is going to be absolutely spectacular as well. Now, over the last few days, we have met so many of the technical staff. We've also met many of the engineers as well. But uh, what about the drivers? I can see the cars right behind me. What about the drivers themselves? Who are these people? Well, I think we should find out. I'm really confident about the race on Sunday. We did well in Detroit, and I hope that carries over to the race here in London. If I win the final, I will be the best in the, in the world, so it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm a new driver this year, so I got some huge shoes to fill. It mean a lot to us that we're still capable of doing it. If I, if I win, my team manager opened the champagne, but I don't uh, can drink. Last year, we, uh, we was uh, second place, and uh, this year, uh, we, we want to, to win. Coming from a small town in upstate New York, it would mean everything to me to win the Drivers' World Championship. I think I will win. I have belief in my car, belief in my team, and belief for me. It would mean the world to win the Drivers' World Championship, because who else gets a chance to win a world title at age 19? I expect it. I, I really want to go to Ferrari. I want to make Indonesia proud of us.
Okay, we are back here live on the grid. I oh, yeah, made you sprint up the front of the grid oh, right, here, mate. Right, okay, okay, have, okay. have a look at this on the Facebook page, right? We've That's got incredible. Theo Bretin, Vive Nieps, Matim. He's got a bit of support. We've also got, who else have we got here? Go Shellico team, La Salle. That's Go the on. De La Salle uh, University in Philippines. If you want to comment, comment on this video and give us a like and give us a favorite and get involved on Facebook. Can I also just say how great you are with the names? Those European names just roll off your tongue so beautifully. We've still got a race to go, my friend. <laughs> Don't peek too soon. Right, are we going to go off on a grid board? Yeah, definitely. Right, definitely. here we go. This is the grid. Do you want to take us around the pole, Yeah, sister, I'll tell please? you what. Let, let, let's start here. Let's start here with St. Thomas Academy. The guys from Minnesota, first on the grid. Possibly the ones to beat. You guys are leading from the front. How do you feel about that? It felt awesome. Can't wait for this race. Okay. And uh, you are the ones that everyone is chasing. How are you going to keep that pressure down to actually execute this race? Well, we just got to make sure we have enough energy, but uh, still stay out front. So uh, being fast, but still have enough energy to be there in the front at the end still. So. And who's your driver? Patrick Gaylord. And, and Patrick is the one, the chosen one, to guide this team to victory? He's the chosen one. Okay, fantastic, guys. Good luck. David, where are you? I'm over here. Oh, I'm right here. I'm right here. Uh, by the way, this car, uh, one thing to tell you about it, um, they've used computer-aided design over this car all the way through. Uh, right, let's just take you down the track. Here we go. So this is the second place car. This is La Jolie Polytech Non. That's the hydrogen fuel cell car. Only one from that class. What we've got here, you can have a look at this one as well. Uh, this is another American entry. So we've got America in positions one and three. Over here we have Nieps also of France, a battery electric entry. Back round we go. And we've got now one of the Asian entries. This is Bangawan team two. And then over here, Toulon Isen. And they are also one of the uh, French teams involved in this. Let me just come over here. I think I've managed to spot uh, the uh, head of vehicle reliability at Ferrari, Nick Collett. Very good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much in, indeed for joining us. Um, so you are involved with the Ferrari team, um, and we met each other at, at Marinello. But first of all, just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your role and what you do. Okay. Um, well, I've been at uh, Marinello for about 15 years now. I started there as a gearbox design engineer, did a bit of R&D, and uh, now I work for the chief designer, uh, coordinating all the efforts on uh, between the different reliability teams in the in the company. So. Okay, and you were with me in Marinella, as we said. So it's due to this innovation partnership, isn't it, between Shell and Ferrari, which has really developed and, and grown and, and really matured now. And just tell us about the prize. We saw a little glimpse of it on the screens before, what Team Bumi Silawangi did last year. But how special is that? What kind of insights are the winners going to get? Well, with uh, Team Bumi Silawangi, we uh, had them on site for three days, I think it was. Um, we gave them uh, several master classes in uh, chassis and engine uh, build techniques. Uh, we gave them tours around uh, various parts of the company, including the composites workshop and uh, the, the museum. Um, and then on uh, the last day, they had the possibility to try and set the fastest or the most efficient lap of Fiorano. So it's a once a lifetime experience. So you could have been back at Marinello right now. You could be in Monaco at the Grand Prix, where Seb Vettel's taking the victory and Kimi Raikkonen has come second in a Ferrari one to. But no, you are here with us at Make the Future Live. What have you made of this great festival? Oh, it's incredible to see everybody uh, working so hard. And uh, the, the youngsters um, really coming up with very innovative solutions to problems and, uh, and, and just putting so much effort in, literally doing all-nighters to make sure everything's uh, tip-top on the day. I don't know if the drivers can hear you. I'm just looking around to see if I can see. Yeah, I think this guy here. Oh, it's Shana, isn't it? That's from Goldbax. Shana's smiling at me. Look, there's a little wave. To all of the drivers here, what is your one word of advice that's going to propel them to victory? Look at the look in her eyes. She's concentrating, the girl. One word of advice. Concentrate. Well, she's got it. She's got that steely look about her. I reckon this car is going to come up from sixth on the grid. OK, you can look down the rest of the grid. And I think we're going to go and find Becky. Becky, whereabouts are you? David, I am right at the back of a very busy grid. Unfortunately, somebody has to bring up the rear in these races. And I've got my team from Indonesia here. Hello, eighth position on the grid. Now, unfortunately, in your qualifying laps, you managed to stop on the hill. That wasn't quite the plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we still confident of this uh, great so yeah we're gonna make it <laughs> absolutely they may be at the back but they're confident have you had a think you're gonna do some things differently before setting off now yeah of course uh, we because we have made some uh, adjustment 
to the driver to drive the car correctly. So you're hoping to work your way up through the pack, top victory? Yeah, I think so. Well, keep that confidence. Good luck to you guys. One thing I just want to show you very quickly. Unfortunately, we do have one empty space here. Eight cars that are participating in this, not the ninth. Uh, they didn't make their break test, but you know what? It's such a shame for them. They worked so hard. But at the end of the day, that's racing and that is sport. Ayo, where are you at? It is racing and it is sport. You know what? I, I'm getting really excited. It's just great to see all these people lined up at the start line. The cars are ready. Goodness knows what's going through these drivers' minds. Now, I'm here with Benjamin from uh, Solar Car Solution, one of three French teams in the final. This is incredible. How are you feeling about your chance? I'm very happy for the team and all people who work on the car, and I hope we will do the best on the track. And do you have a particular tactic that you're going to maybe take into the race? Yeah, we have a particular tactic for this race, but uh, I let my driver do it. Oh, it's a secret, I see. Yeah. Now, um, what is so special about your driver? He's a very uh, nice driver. He, uh, for qualification, he did the same time each time, so he's a very good driver. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now let's head over to Team Neeps. Good to see you, Benjamin. Uh, let's head down to Team Neeps. Uh, one of my favorite people on the circuit, Eric. Yes. Allez la France, my friend, how are we? Yes, yes, allez la France, uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, look, it is, it's now time. You have three places to make in yeah. the race if you are going to win this. Do you think you can do it? I think it's possible to win one place and why not mm. two or three <laughs> and the final goal is on the podium. Okay. If I can, it's a very, very good thing. Okay, honestly, Eric, good luck and good luck to all the teams. Now, the man that's going to be casting his eye across the proceedings is the one and only David Garrido. David, what's going on? Thank you very much indeed, Ayo. Thank you, Becky. Thank you to Nick Collett from Ferrari. And uh, thank you also to uh, Andrew Brown, upstream director for Shell, who's going to be involved uh, in the races uh, underway. And as you can see, the five-minute warning is underway. A couple of your comments on Facebook. Luke Becker says, go Minnesota. Arnoldus Adro P says, go ITS Team 2. Let's go cadets. Say Matt Magia and Matthew Mose. And another one from Sonia Kowalski is also commenting on this video on Facebook Live and plenty more besides. Get involved, we are live right now on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. So the time counts down. As you can see, the crowds are what, five, six thick there in the uh, barriered area. You can see uh, one of the uh, flags flying uh, and you can see that the uh, grid is still yet to be cleared. Four minutes and around a quarter to go. So let's go through the grid from the back to the front. And we're gonna start off with the uh, eighth placed team who are Team ITS Team 2 uh, of uh, Indonesia in the diesel-powered car. Team ITS Team 2 uh, with uh, Fajar Aditya Budi Prasetyo, the 20-year-old who is in the cockpit. And that's 9.04. So that is our final entry. They are eighth on the grid. Uh, then the seventh place entry. We saw her very, very briefly. Nick Collett was talking about her. It is Elena King from Newber Goldbacks in The Hack. And they are in position seven on the grid. And uh, she's pretty confident of her chances. A pretty relaxed kind of person. But uh, make no bones about it then you're going to definitely get some overtaking maneuvers from this girl when she gets in the right position. Sixth on the grid, Isen Toulon, Solar Car Solutions, also from France. The battery electric entry will start sixth on the grid with uh, Romain Busson, uh, who is in the cockpit from Marseille. Uh, he loves F1, would love to go to Ferrari and to Maranello uh, at to the uh, end of the year. Then we have the highest performing Asian entry, Bengawan Team 2, uh, Samudra uh, 4 is the name of the car and it's Rifki Dwi Prutanto who is uh, in the cockpit. 22 year olds from Suricata and uh, he would like to be a Ferrari engineer. His favorite driver is the great Michael Schumacher who won seven Formula One world titles and five on the trot between 2000 and 2004. That's the black liveried car, 902, fifth on the grid. Then fourth is the burgundy themed car in the bright blue livery, everyone's uh, second favorite if you like which is with the grapes and with the fleur-de-lis and the bright blue livery. It's Niepce from the Lycénis for Niepce, the Carbon Zero car with Gail Perusson, 17-year-old, just turned 17, uh, in the car. Third on the grid with the, uh, you can see on the left of your shot, just behind the pole sitter, uh, T906, Knights 3 from Alton Conga High School, Minnesota. Logan Sailor's the man in the cockpit.
spit. And if he's learned anything from his predecessor, Isaac Sorensen, this man will be going for some manoeuvres. You can absolutely bet your bottom dollar on it. Will it be Logan's run today? We will find out uh, in around two minutes' time. Then onto the front row. So, so far, we've had Indonesia, USA, France, Indonesia, France, and USA again. The front row is a split between the continents. From Europe, La Jolibri, Polytechnance, the hydrogen fuel cell car on the right of your shot. There they are, the little blue space bubble, and it is Adeline Prudent, who is 19 years of age, on the front row. The two female drivers in this race are second, and also they are seventh, respectively. And uh, as far as La Jolie Polytech Nantes is concerned, well, they have been in sh uh, the Chalico Marathon for a very, very long time, and they have uh, progressed through Microjoule and Polyjoule to City Joule, and this is the latest member of the family. We are down to the last minute and a quarter. Let's tell you about the pole sitter. Io had a little interview with the team uh, just a few moments ago while we were doing the grid walk, and it is Patrick Gaylor, the 18 year old from St. Paul's, Minnesota, who is in the cockpit, and here's maybe the key about this car. It was designed specifically for this competition. Yes, they wanted to progress through the Shaliko Marathon, but it was all about the Drivers' World Championship for them. It's lighter, it's lower, it's wider than last year. It's got one seat instead of two as we get into the final 45 seconds. As you can see, the clouds are gathering. We've got to get through uh, 10 to 15 minutes of this race uh, to see who is crowned the winner. Are we going to get the showers that descend on us or are we about to avoid the rain? 30 seconds to go. Everyone is waiting for the start of this race. And remember once more the prize up for grabs. It is a money can't buy, all expenses paid trip to the home of Scuderia Ferrari, uh, which is Maranello, courtesy of Shell's innovation partnership with Scuderia Ferrari. So we're getting down to the final countdown. It is a team 905 from St. Thomas Academy who are on pole, the experimental vehicle team. Down we go. Five, four, three lights, two and one. All the lights are on and off we go. And we go racing and then we've got a close shot. Andrew Brown, the upstream director of Shell. And it's a strong start once again from the St. Thomas Academy experimental vehicle team. And look at Polytech, they have dropped right to the back. Now remember, we saw this in the regional race. Remember that they dropped right from first to fourth and they still came through and won. Right now they are rank last. So that's a team that was second uh, with uh, Adeline Prudent. Careful it means in French, well she's being ultra careful here. She's decided to harvest energy from the start. So we've got St. Thomas Academy experimental vehicle team with Patrick Gaylord out in front. Nieps and Al have taken second place and they have stormed inside the first part of the swimming pool concept and they're all over uh, the bridge and all safely through, through second part of swimming pool. There goes Patrick and St. Thomas Academy car and behind him he's got another American car for company and that's Knights 3, it's an American 1-2 followed by the two French Nieps and also Yves Toulon and then the remaining cars and the last French entry is there at the back. There we've got St. Thomas Academy round the hairpin, safely done. We're around a third away through this lap and we've got one lap down of four uh, and there is uh, Knights 3 and Yepsa in close control and once again he sent Toulon, Bengawat and then uh, the uh, Polytech uh, not car and uh, finally right there at the end it's uh, Elena and the Newberg uh, Goldbacks car. So this is how it looks right now. This is St. Thomas Academy uh, from Nyepsa who have now just taken past Knights 3 and that's where the battle for second is. But there is our leader coming up through the loop. Now this is the first crucial part of this race. The incline is steep. They gain 12 meters from the bottom of the hill climb to the top. And there you can see Knights 3 still in second place uh, with Nyepsa. And now here look comes Polytech Nantes. They've decided to put a push now. Up they come from the back of the pack, past their compatriot Nieps, and now they've got Knights 3 in their sights. And let's go back to the leader and find out where he is. He's up uh, through the hill, and you can see Knights 3 getting swallowed up here. Nantes are on a charge, but we've still got the leader of St. Thomas Academy uh, by many the bookies' favourites, and now he'll come off the gas wheel, Patrick, and coast down towards the uh, starting uh, finish line again, round paddock corner, round towards the paddock chicane, and uh, St. Thomas Academy are leading after one lap of four. Let's head to Io. Oh my goodness me, this is absolute carnage here. We've got all teams, the team managers speaking to their teams, but also as you've seen, the rain has started, so we've got added difficulty to the conditions. This is about smart driving, as I always say, about conserving that energy, about conserving that fuel. David, back to you.
flags out on the circuit, ladies and gentlemen. Red flags out on the circuit. Uh, the cars will start slowing down. Obviously, the rain has come at this precise moment in the race and the race is going to be stopped due to rain. Well, what drama we've had here. Already from the start, we had Polytech Nantes slipping to the back of the pack, and now because of the rain, the rain has come down, and we're gonna have to suspend proceedings for the moment. And there we can see the uh, end of the uh, swimming pool complex there, and you can see the lights are on. Now, remember, these are urban concept vehicles, so they are able to handle these conditions as St. Thomas Academy comes through, then we've got Nepsa, but remember that these cars have to simply hold station, hold position, and through come Polytech Nantes as well. Uh, so we await to find out what the next step is as far as this race is concerned. The cars will just continue circulating, but right now, this race is suspended on lap two because of the rain. Uh, we will just uh, give you a very brief update on what happened a bit earlier on. Right from the start, we had St. Thomas Academy off the grid, off pole, and into the lead, but then the rain came at the end of lap one. Becky, what can you tell us down in the paddock? Well, there's a little bit of confusion going on down here. The guys from St. Thomas are here. They're looking a little bit bewildered. You guys were in the lead. The race has currently been suspended. What are your feelings? Uh, well, it was raining significantly more in Detroit when we ended up racing there, so I guess... I just get a bit confused. Okay, so there is a little bit of confusion down here in the paddocks with what is exactly going on with the rain. But for the minute, the race has stopped. Hopefully, we'll get back going underway very soon. David, back to you. Thank you very much indeed, Becky. Well, as I mentioned before, these are urban concept cars, which means that they are like or more like normal road-going cars. They have rear-view wing mirrors. They also have windscreen wipers. They have to have more of the same things that normal road-going cars do to make the technology that's developed within them more relevant to road-going users. And Shell, uh, being a pioneer of bright energy ideas, they themselves as well have supported this project. And the Drivers World Championship is also a testbed for those technologies to be developed. So we are continuing to wait to find out what will happen as far as the rain is concerned. Plenty of conversations there going on. We can see Oliver Hitchcock, the race director, on his phone making some decisions there. And I'm sure that he will be making the right ones uh, very, very shortly indeed. Right now, this race is suspended, but we will give you an update on the Drivers World Championship 2017 in just a couple of minutes' time. for technical inspection. So join us while we actually walk there and find them. This is the queue for technical inspection. Laris and I are trying to find our team. There we are. And this is the actual Laris. Our team members, Marvin and Tobias, are discussing last minute preparations for technical inspection. Otherwise, our car is pretty much ready. We have a new seat, we have new onboard technology. It is Tuesday afternoon, it's half past three, and I will show you where we are in the queue. So it starts here. Have a new try 
Liebe this year. Hana. Ready. It doesn't have any problems. Laris, Frank, and me are now on our way to hopefully see our car starting on the prototype test track. We're just uh, 3D printing some uh, parts for the car, some spare parts if anything breaks. Gonna go find the other guys because the car is not here. It's uh, currently in uh, technical uh, inspection. testing uh, the parallel parking uh, capability of the car. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the rest of the team is sitting up on the tri Tribune, uh, eager to await if we, if we pass all the tests. to Vroom TV, we're going to be showing you our car. Hello, I didn't see you there. You've got your air compressor here, which goes down here. This is a safety relief valve, so when, it, when the air pressure goes over five bar, the air will get sucked out, and hopefully that will get us going really fast. Technical inspection for the driver check-in. She weighs 59, 58 kilograms. Now we've passed our new driver for technical inspection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flipping. Flipping for well, the most important member of our team is Rachel Riley. We're going behind the scenes with Brum EK Racing again. We've had a good day. We've only sent one of our team to hospital so far. Yeah. The nose fell off, but we got the we got the car on the track, and that's yeah. all we wanted. Good morning and welcome to the Swedish team Vera. Today is a very hot day, and so some of the team are uh, cooling down, cooling off. not only hot out here, it's very sunny, so you got to stay protected. <laughs> so even after you've finished a uh, nice and beautiful vehicle like ours, there's still a lot of fine tuning to do. And here come the drivers. Hey! How you doing? Fix an uh, overheating issue. Yeah. Overheating issue, okay. Yeah. 
So now we're gonna do the old Swedish thing of uh, taking a fika, which is literally taking a um, some sort of snack and a pause. <laughs> this guy here. As an engineering student, this is an awesome place to be. Okay, that's it for today. We've had a good good day. We had our ups and downs, but let's go and win this race. <laughs> First walk on the track now ever. It's really exciting. efficiency from Vostok. This is Laros, our mascot, and our actual Laros, our car, is currently in queue for technical inspection. So join us while we actually walk there and find them. This is the queue for technical inspection. Laros and I are trying to find our team. There we are. And this is the actual Laros. Our team members, Marvin and Tobias, are discussing last-minute preparations for technical inspection. Otherwise, our car is pretty much ready. We have a new seat, we have new onboard technology. It is Tuesday afternoon, it's half past three, and I will show you where we are in the queue. So it starts here. see our car starting on the prototype test track.
Hello. So, uh, what's your name? We're just uh, 3D printing some uh, parts for the car, some spare parts if anything breaks. Gonna go find the other guys because the car is not here. It's uh, currently in uh, technical uh, inspection. Just testing uh, the parallel parking uh, capability of the car. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the rest of the team is sitting up on the tri Tribune, uh, eager to await if we if we pass all the tests. Welcome to Vroom TV. We're going to be showing you our car. Hello, I didn't see you there. You've got your air compressor in here, which goes down here. This is a safety relief valve, so when it when the air pressure goes over five bar, the air will get sucked out, and hopefully that will get us going really fast. Technical inspection for the driver checking. She weighs 59, 58 kilograms. Now we've passed our new driver for technical inspection. Yeah. For the most important member of our team, it's Rachel Riley. We're going behind the scenes with Brum EK Racing again. We've had a good day. We've only sent one of our team to hospital so far. Yeah. The nose fell off, but we got the we got the car on the track, and that's yeah. all we wanted. Good morning and welcome to the Swedish team Vera. Today is a very hot day, and so some of the team are uh, cooling down, cooling off. Not only hot out here, it's very sunny, so you gotta stay protected. <laughs> So even after you've finished a uh, nice and beautiful vehicle like ours, there's still a lot of fine tuning to do. And here come the drivers. Hey! How you doing? Trying to fix an uh, overheating issue. Overheating issue, okay. So now we're gonna do the old Swedish thing of uh, taking a fika, which is literally taking a um, some sort of snack and a pause. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
day. <laughs> As an engineering student, this is an awesome place to be. Okay, that's it for today. We've had a good, good day. We had our ups and downs, but let's go and win this race. <laughs> walk on the track now ever it's really exciting efficiency from Rostock. This is Laros, our mascot, and our actual Laros, our car, is currently in queue for technical inspection. So join us while we actually walk there and find them. This is the queue for technical inspection. Laros and I are trying to find our team. There we are. And this is the actual Laros. Our team members, Marvin and Tobias, are discussing last-minute preparations for technical inspection. Otherwise, our car is pretty much ready. We have a new seat, we have new onboard technology. It is Tuesday afternoon, it's half past three, and I will show you where we are in the queue. So it starts here. to hopefully see our car starting on the prototype test track.
welcome back to the Queen Elizabeth Park. As you can see, uh, the park has uh, rather been vacated now because the rains decided to descend on this track. And uh, unfortunately, we had to stop running of the uh, Drivers World Championship final of 2017. As you can see, uh, the uh, brollies are still up uh, and the track is now much, much damper than it was before. It's a real shame because we were one lap into the four lap race and there have been some uh, fantastic overtaking maneuvers and already a fair bit of wheel to wheel combat on the track. So we are still waiting for the official announcement from Race Direction that the uh, race is indeed cancelled. We're going to wait for that official confirmation. But just to let you know that we will be back on Facebook Live a bit later on with more reaction and speaking to the winning team. Uh, the URL, the address you've got to remember, facebook.com forward slash shell. That's facebook.com forward slash shell. So we're still waiting for the official outcome of this race and how uh, and if and how they're going to decide uh, who has won that to all expenses trip to Maranello for the winners. So waiting uh, further announcements uh, from uh, the race controllers uh, and uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can uh, on this 2017 Drivers' World Championship.